Lisa Rondiki's record time set in 1988 is nearly one and a half minutes faster than any other rival. A brilliant winner of the Auckland Commonwealth Games Marathon, she's recently overcome a hip injury. Lisa's gearing for the Barcelona Olympic Marathon and has successfully combined motherhood with her demanding running schedule. It's difficult, I'm busy. I realise now how much free time I used to have, but it's a lot of fun. I like coming home and having Emma in the house and she's a lot of fun to have, have around. So it's just a different um, way of life and I have to set my priorities and, and just not spend as much time sitting around doing nothing as I used to. I'm back in training now. I have no pain in my back anymore, but I don't think I'm in the sort of shape that I was in in 1988 when I came and ran here, but maybe I'll surprise myself. I'll find out on Sunday. Yes, well, Gaylene, as you well know, there's never a dull moment. You don't sit around twiddling thumbs when you have a little baby. That's right, Gordon. <laughs> but she combines it very well. Oh, she's a different Lisa on Deiki today. She's happier. She's, she's able to overcome difficulties she's had in her running, like those setbacks, those injuries she's had this year. Because she's got Emma, she's just refocused and she's getting about with the job. She's not 100% fit, but she'll run really well today. And her main rivals? Her main rival will be Krishna Stanton. Krishna's been running really well on the track in Europe. Um, if Lisa was 100% fit, no one would challenge her in the 14K. But Chris is a really talented young runner and it could be a good race between the two of them today. Well, it's a terrific course. It's a very scenic course, especially on a day like this. And I think uh, when you consider it's 14 kilometres, it starts in the city centre, it goes down through Rushcutters Bay, then also into Double Bay. There's a, there's a pretty nasty hill once you come through King's Cross Tunnel. Now, there's the hill up to the top of Edgecliff. And this is where Monaghetti broke up the field last year. A two kilometre stretch through Rose Bay and up Heartbreak Hill. We're about the halfway stage there, the seven kilometre mark. And uh, conditions hopefully will favour the runners now with the westerly breeze coming down through Dover Heights and Vaucluse down to the finishing line at Bondi Beach. It's a very nice patch there uh, through 11, 12 kilometres because it is downhill. And if they've got the tailwind, well, who knows, that world record or the race record will certainly be under threat. 40 minutes and 8 seconds. $50,000 is up for grabs, Chris Wardlaw. Monas, I know he doesn't run for the money, but it has to be an incentive. Oh, it's a nice side bonus, obviously, for Mona. But the, the key thing really is to, to run a highly competitive race, and the record may look after itself. If you worry too much about the record and wake up and the conditions are no good, it's a bad focus. So he'd be, uh, he's, uh, it's obviously on his mind, but he's got to win the race first. Well, I tell you what, uh, there are some uh, unbelievable hills in this race. Um, firstly, the little one uh, into King's Cross Tunnel, and then uh, they go through Rushcutters Bay. Now, there's the 40-metre rise, the distance above sea level, and then they go into Double Bay. The hill out of Double Bay, not too bad, but here comes the big one. 80-metre gradient, Heartbreak Hill, through the halfway point. That's about 240, 250 feet above sea level. That is a very tough hill indeed, Chris. Yes, well, I've run it, and uh, I have to say it's... It's one of the toughest fun runs in the world. Um, I think for the elite runners, it's a tough course. For, for people who are just going out for their once a year Sunday run, it's not probably not the course I'd choose. Well, looking at those gradients, though, that really is scaling Mount Everest, isn't it? <laughs> yes, well, the, the hill out of Rose Bay is, is a critical element in the race. Mona actually broke the field up uh, before the bottom of the hill, I think, in the, to this morning. He's sort of hoping that uh, he could do the same, but I think he's uh, banking on the hill to win it for him. Well, we're about eight minutes away uh, from the start and uh, we had a look at the, the weather conditions this morning. We went down to Bondi and it really is a delightful day. Cool to mild, so that's, that's very good news for the runners. Mostly sunny, there's hardly a cloud in sight. Light to moderate westerly winds, forecast maximum 19. And I guess, uh, Chris and, and Gaylene, it's getting uh, pretty close to that at the moment. Now, there's the wind strength, Gaylene, uh, round about uh, five kilometres. That's at the top of Heartbreak Hill and it's coming from the northwest, So that's going to be good news in the closing stages. It certainly will be. And Heartbreak Hill, it's not just a matter of running strongly to the top. It's also important to be not that tired when you get there, that you've got to maintain rhythm and have a good leg pace and good flowing down the other side. Well, former Olympian Mark Tonelli uh, is without doubt firmly established as the master interviewer of breathless swimmers. But now the shoes are on the other foot. Let's catch up with Mark on Notorious Heartbreak Hill. Thanks, Gordon. Breathless is the operative word here today on Heartbreak Hill. 1.3 kilometres of torture, or in layman's terms, two and a half thousand steps up this hill. It's actually in the middle of the course, so it is really a heartbreaker because by the time you get to the top, you're only halfway there. Fortunately, you can run downhill the rest of the way to Bondi. Once you get up to the top here, there is 
possibly about another 100 or 200 yards to go, but there's also a drink stop. Thanks, Meryl. And a lot of the runners will be looking forward to getting a nice cold drink into them, by the way. So am I. It's uh, full of electrolyte replacement as well as just uh, fluids. Over behind me, have a look at this. What a great view of Sydney Harbour, the Opera House and the bridge. I can't see too many of the leading runners actually looking out at this view, but of the 40 odd thousand that are gonna come up here, I can assure you that a few of them will be stopping to have a nice cold one up here and have a look out over the view. And speaking of the view, looking out there, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's about 18 degrees and the winds are from the west, which is perfect conditions, according to the runners at the press conference the other day, for a possible race record. Back to you, Gordon. I think Mark uh, Tanelli is setting a new trend in airy running shorts, but uh, <laughs> there's the, the city skyline at the moment, and um, I guess we have a, a vast television audience watching this live coverage, and you can see there College Street on the left and William Street on the right, forming that V shape, and uh, we're now about six minutes away from the start of the 21st annual City to Surf. Let's go down to Karen Tai at the start. <laughs> Thanks, Gordon. Well, it's a bit toey on the Group A start line here. I can see the Mercer brothers, the Ironman, Darren and Dean Mercer. They're in the start line at the A group. B line is looking pretty good at the moment. They're a bit relaxed. I don't know how that will be in a couple of minutes' time. But what has all the elite runners are over here just warming up before the race start. And it's been nice to see the Steve Monaghetti's, Andrew Lloyd and Brad Pam just running around over here in front of the B group and the crowd giving them a good cheer on. So that's good to see. Back to you, Gordon. I can assure you we're going to have this race covered from all angles and Peter G will be with the leaders. Uh, we have two cameras on the, the lead mobile car and uh, he's going to have an armchair ride. I bet you're glad you're not running it, Pete. Definitely, Gordon. Uh, this would have to be the best seat in the house. I won't be sitting on the tailgate of what our Japanese friends dubbed during the Gold Coast Marathon, the moving car. Bit of a tautology, but uh, good enough for them. It's good enough for us. We've got two cameras, as you said. Ross here on the uh, close-up, Mick on the wide shot, and the Chinese master, Wayne, in the back there, able to uh, cut between vision from both cameras, and Phil uh, beside me looking after the sound. I'll be strapped back there. Uh, bringing you the shot that you're seeing now is our bike, 1100 cc's, the uh, Heartbreak Hills Angels there, Renzo with the lightweight camera, able to go back and forward through the field a little bit in constant contact with uh, Vic, who's uh, piloting the machine. And, uh, of course, this uh, machine that I'm sitting on, the uh, moving car, is runner-friendly. It's got an exhaust pipe out the side, which uh, means the carbon monoxide is not going into the runners' faces. It's channelled way up in the air. So they'll be very pleased about that. Well, uh, a great spot I'm in at the moment. Down the bottom of William Street, uh, well away from the runners, because as this tighter humanity comes down towards us from the start, not even uh, our lead foot driver, Peter, would be able to keep in front of them. So we're gunning our engines, Gordon waiting for the start and I have to let viewers in on a little secret Peter you've run the course twice and got lost both times <laughs> yes uh, this time third time lucky I'm going to keep uh, close attention to just how they do get down to Bondi and of course uh, Dick Telford um, he will be wearing revolutionary jogger can uh, you're looking very suntan down there Chris uh, Dick and you'll be also looking at a couple of your proteges with a lot of interest yeah I've got a few proteges uh, about 50,000 behind them so it's uh, it is with a lot of interest you're looking a lot more relaxed than you did last year with the uh, 40,000 people behind you ready to, to start well this is just experience isn't it yeah that's what it's all about <laughs> and you're going to be trying to stay uh, with the leading lady runners yes yeah, got my eye on Lisa and uh, there's Krishna Wood and uh, a young girl, Jackie Hallam, who won the uh, Gold Coast Marathon. She mightn't have had too much time to recover, but she could do all right too. And you've just taken over coaching her, I believe. Well, she told me she didn't have a coach, and I, I told her I'd help her out, so uh, let's hope she can do well anyway. Sorry, I couldn't hear that, Kevin. Is she running this morning's race seriously? Has she recovered enough from the marathon? No, she's just got to run quite nice and easy. Okay, well, that's a well, I think uh, Dick's getting uh, ready then for the start. We're very close to the starting time now, but um, you can see the twin starting lines and the runners in, in the Group B area will start a few minutes after Group A, which is a good thing, I think, from the safety aspect more than anything else, Chris. Yes, it's, uh, it can be very hectic uh, at the start and uh, I certainly wouldn't want to fall over in the middle of that pack. And there, there are the odd four, which can be a bit of a problem. People have to be very careful in that, that first minute or so running. In the Rotterdam Marathon in April, Chris Salah, one of the favourites in the men's race, didn't get past the first five metres. He tripped and just literally got trampled. They had to pull him out from underneath the crowd of runners. And, of course, it happened to Deacon Boston too. That's right. Yeah. 
Well, apart from all Australian states being representative, we have runners from the United States, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, Bahrain, Singapore, Japan, and even a runner from Turkey, Yavuz Saab, who is actually a disabled runner. He'll be walking the course, and he travels around the world competing in fun runs. But uh, I don't know whether the accent's going to be on fun here today because it's going to be quite warm, and it's a, a very demanding course, as we know. I think this race initially when it started Gordon was a fun run but to the elite runners especially the men it's it's not today it's really probably considered the most prestigious road race in Australia for men it's a little bit different for the women because they don't have their own start therefore it's a little bit more difficult for them to locate each other and have a really competitive race but as far as elite males going this would be the icing on the cake so we're one minute away for the start of this year's race. An interesting point, Gailene, the percentage of women has really risen from initially 10 to 12% uh, 20 odd years ago. It's now up to 32%. We're getting very close to the start here. It's going to be a real charge. Indeed, the first uh, kilometer, two kilometers is, is really a sprint. Yes, they roll downhill very quickly here then up through the tunnel. The biggest community sporting event in the Southern Hemisphere. The race is ranked third after the San Francisco Beta Breakers, which attracts up to 100,000 people, and the Bloomsday Race in Washington, which attracts around 60,000. So we're away in this year's race and the sea of human lava again spills down into William Street and it's the charge of the Light Brigade. Yes, and already we can see Nonna and uh, in the white singlet with the blue stripe. Uh, Andrew Lloyd in the bright orange, what do we call that? <laughs> Iridescent orange. Iridescent orange. And Mel Nord was in the uh, lime colours, so we'll be able to pick them out pretty quickly. Unlike yourself, Chris, I think this is going to be a one-man race. I don't really expect Mona's going to have a lot of competition today. I'd anticipate he probably will win it by close to a minute. The form that he's in, the, the recent 10-mile race that, he, that he's run, um, and only three weeks to the World Championships, I really don't think there's any other Australian men that are in that kind of form. I hope you're right, Gary. <laughs> you're the coach, Chris. A bit of confidence here. <laughs> So uh, this is a community event. I think we have to emphasize that. Certainly uh, we'll be concentrating on the elite runners, but uh, people really enter into the spirit of things. A few outfits and, uh, here. Now, what would you how would you describe that one, Gailey? <laughs> There's a couple of weightlifters there. I'm not sure. <laughs> I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> A little bit uh, suspect that one, but the runners have come past the official race hotel, the boulevard, where all of the elite runners stay, and they're now racing up towards the King's Cross Tunnel. There's a bit of an incline here. And a couple of cutting in from the side there. A couple I don't of... think that last very long. <laughs> well, they're wow. stretching right back up into Park Street and towards uh, the skyscrapers beyond Hyde Park, and. And it's nice to see everyone entering into the spirit, waving to the television cameras. Yeah. Not that they'll be recognised in, in those masses. And by the sounds of the start, a lot of power walkers competing in this year's event. Yeah, everybody has their own goal in this race, and uh, some will have some, some specific time goals, but a lot will just be doing it. Uh, happy to get to the finish and say they've done the city gets there. Well, let's have a look at some of these leading runners now. It's Steve Monaghetti out in front. You can't miss Andrew Lloyd in the iridescent colours behind him. And tucked behind Andrew, you can see Rodney Higgins. He was in the red and white uniform. And uh, the shortest route here is on the left-hand side. So you stick to the left and through the King's Cross Tunnel, and then uh, it's a sprint downhill into Rushcutters Bay. Yeah, the, run the runners run the tangent all the time. Well, Dick Telford has had a good start, and uh, are you keeping pace with Lisa? Yes, I can see Lisa about seven or eight metres up ahead. Behind her, we've got Michelle Dillon and Krishna Wood. Well, nice to see that uh, Krishna's up in the firing line early on, too. 
Yes, I expect she will be, Gordon. Uh, I think Krishna will probably be there for the first 10K. Lisa's strength should probably show out between 10 and 14K. But Krish has been running really well, and as we said earlier, Lisa's not 100% fit, so it could be a competitive race right to the finish. Well, up to 40,000 people taking part in this race and uh, soaking up the atmosphere. I hope she hasn't been trampled on yet, Karen Ty. People are getting a bit more toey here. It's just an amazing atmosphere. It's my first city to surf last year. You just can't describe the feeling just being in amongst so many people. The streets over here are just strewn with garbage bags, bits of newspaper, plastic bags. This group is just about to go. I think the officials are a bit more nervous than the runners. I must say, though, I've seen a few blue bibs running down with the red bibs, so a few people did get away, but the majority have been very good. So back through to the leaders, and they're really stretching out as they come down through the King's Cross Tunnel. They're moving down into Rushcutters Bay, uh, off to their left, the world-famous Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. And Peter G in very good position here to put a tap on these leaders. Well, Gordon, uh, the runners behind Steve were determined not to let Monaghany get away out of the tunnel where he made his break last year. David Andrew Lloyd sitting right with him. Pat Carroll on his outside, the red-haired runner, and going very well in the early game. David Evans, fresh from his silver medal at the World Student uh, Games. He's looking good with uh, Malcolm Norwood there. So there's a, a pack of six. Deke back in uh, the next group, leading them with uh, Brad Camp. So they're determined to, uh, in the early going anyway, try and stick with Monaghetti. And I can see too, Peter, that uh, Rod Higgins is in about fifth or sixth position. Uh, so he's just sitting in behind the pace trying to smother up. Yes, it's a nice little group. They're only a K and a half into the race. And uh, they'd be just rolling along at this stage. And Dick Telford, I'd imagine, uh, is either just through the, the King's Cross Tunnel. Uh, what's happening where you are? Well, Gordon, I've got uh, Krishna Wood just up ahead of me on the right. And uh, Lisa Martin. And the Japanese girl um, is just up ahead of her. So it's looking like a very good race for the women. And the pace looks to be a cracker. It is a cracker. <laughs> How are you keeping up? Um, I was struggling, but it's always been a professional week of all. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Lisa is in the green shorts. Krishna's wearing uh, red. The young Japanese runner, I'm not sure of, but they sent a very good team to the Gold Coast Marathon. In fact, the half marathon was won in 71 minutes by young Japanese ladies. So we could get a really good performance from this young woman this morning too. So it's Andrew Lloyd on the right and Steve Monaghetti just uh, leading this pack of uh, four other runners. And as they're now making a, what is a, quite a testy hill. And uh, they're a little bit behind schedule last year. They haven't quite gone as fast as last year as they come up to the top of the Edgecliff Hill, but there's only a few seconds in it. And this is where Monaghetti uh, was able to make his move in 1990. Yeah, Mono went, feels he went a little bit too quickly last year before the hill, so he's going to monitor it a little bit. But already there's a bit of a gap between Mona Lloydy and Mel Norwood and uh, Pat Carroll, Evans and Higgins just a couple of metres back. Well, we've just heard the B group has started some six minutes after the A group and right amongst it, Karen Ty. Thanks. Well, I think I've got the safest position here. I'm just perched up on this metal gate outside the museum. Everybody's started. It's just at a walk pace now, really. You just can't move any other way. Interesting thing to note, though, because there are so many people, the guys right at the back and girls right at the back of the pack here, they won't even make past the start line till at least five minutes, maybe seven minutes' time. So, really, they're going to be standing around wondering what's happening, and they won't really get here and get the atmosphere of it till quite a while to come now. Yes, um, Steve Monaghetti, I believe, is catching a three o'clock plane back to Melbourne. And uh, when he's on the plane, there will still be runners trying to complete the course. That's, uh, what, five hours later? Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> but the biggest percentage of runners last year came in the age bracket, 19 to 29. Next best was 30 to 39. Steve Monaghetti, Andrew Lloyd, one, two at the moment. Peter. Yeah, they really uh, cracked on the pace coming down this hill. Rush Cutters Bay, Gordon. Uh, really bowling down the downhill. Malcolm Norwood sitting in behind there looking really good. And of course, they've got the steep stuff coming up only uh, about three kilometres into the race at this stage. Yeah. And uh, Rod Higgins uh, starting to try and 
gain a little bit of contact. He's about 20 metres back then, Pat Carroll and Evans. They're the leading six at this stage, separated by about uh, 25, 30 metres. Well, uh, I can tell you that Chris Wardlaw alongside me is pretty excited because two of his charges there, Monaghetti and Norwood, uh, are running 1-2 with Andrew Lloyd. This is where we are at the moment, just going through 3Ks. They're coming down that hill into Double Bay. You hear that music in the background. That's a, a band on top of the, the awning at the Golden Sheep Hotel, and they've become a, a very familiar sight over the years. Yes, they've been playing there for a long time. This group have got away already, and it doesn't surprise because they really... I knew they were going to go out quick. Mel was going to try and hang on, and he's obviously done that, so he's feeling good. Lloydie, of course, is a danger in any race. He's a, a class runner from 1,500 right through to Marathon, and until Lloydie's off, I'd never, ever say that he's going to lose a race because he is a class athlete. And heading up the second group, who are about 30 or so metres behind, is Rod Higgins. Rod Higgins, followed by Pat Carroll and David Evans. Uh, Rod's probably running a very even-paced race here. He's probably going to have to hope that Andrew Lloyd and Mel Norwood perhaps drop from the early fast start and try and pick them up later in the event. Well, the runners don't see this, but uh, this is the sort of real estate that exists uh, on the left-hand side as they start to negotiate this little hill uh, moving up towards Point Piper and some of the most exclusive and expensive real estate in Australia. This is a, a world famous harbour as we know but uh, really it is in the pink here today. Yes, there's some magic running along around here uh, before the, the big hill and we're th about 3k into the race and Mon is uh, really putting on the pressure obviously and he's going to make it very hard on, on Mal and Lloydie to hang in there especially once he gets the hill. In fact, I'd say Lloydy may have even dropped a few metres there, which is what Mel was hoping. He was hoping that Mona would drag him away from um, the rest of the field, and that's happened at this stage, but it's very early days. Steve Monaghetti looking very strong, and Norwood sticking with him. And that's and, where uh, your, your second group, your Rod Higgins and your Pat Carroll and David Evans, would be hoping that that would happen, that the runners that tried to go with Monas would find that the pace was a bit too quick early and it'll give them the opportunity to later in the event to try and reel them back and pick up those, those placings. And leading this group, uh, Rod Higgins, who's a very perky customer and uh, he's the sort of guy who has a lot of confidence. He, he's prepared to tip an upset before the race. Um, Rod won't, wouldn't put it past himself to try and win an event like this. He's got a lot of respect for Monas, but he'd say, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try and win it. And in the process, he'll run well. Yes, he's, he's, a he's a terrific talent, actually, Rod Higgins. And the other person in that pack is David Evans, who ran second at the World University Games 5,000 metres recently. Andrew's looking a bit tired here. He's uh, dropping back. Andrew's been training for the 5,000 metres. He'll be representing Australia in the World Championships this month in the 5,000 metres on the track. What do you think about a 14K preparation for that, Chris? Well, uh, I mean, Lloydie and Dick probably, you know, they've planned it ahead of time. I personally wouldn't run this distance before a 5,000 metres, but Lloydie's such a classy athlete, I don't think it really matters. Well, how are we going time-wise, Peter G? Coming up to the uh, 4K mark now, you'll see the line across the road. And they're only about five seconds uh, outside, so uh, going very well in the early going. There's Lloyd uh, at about three and a half k. You can see the uh, pain coming onto his face. The face a little bit too much for him to uh, keep with Norwood and Monaghetti. And uh, that was up that incline coming towards uh, Double Bay here. So four kilometres in, and uh, well, the, the two Wardlaw train runners looking pretty good. Yes, this looks like a, a possible Quinella, even at this early stage. Oh, it's so, early days, yeah. <laughs> and also, I think we should make the point, they didn't go out quite as fast as last year, but they are uh, just ahead of the, the race schedule time of last year. So this record is very much on here in these ideal conditions. Well, a very interesting situation developing with the elite lady runners. Let's go down to Dick Telford. Yeah, well, what's happening here? Up the front. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Up the front we've got uh, Lisa Martin still, Krishna Wood, and the Amari Fingari, a Japanese runner, just dropping off a little bit, five metres to ten metres behind. I'm not able to hold their pace. I'm about 25 metres off the pace. Well, I can tell you, Dick, I know you probably don't feel like laughing, but Chris Wardlaw certainly is having a chuckle at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, 
Hey, get out here and help me, mate. I'm not swapping jobs. <laughs> There's 2K on the back, I think. Feels like two tonnes. <laughs> That's great, though. Good fun. But just to let you know, Dick, that uh, up front it's uh, Monaghetti and Norwood leading the way and they've dropped off Andrew Lloyd, who's about 30 or 40 metres astern. Yeah, well, they're very strong, those two. Definitely Monaghetti's, you know, world-class runner. Fantastic runner. Well, keep going up that hill. Uh, we're all thinking of you. Thank you. And uh, you can look forward to a two-kilometre stretch through Rose Bay. That'll make it a bit more comfortable. A chance to consolidate. Hey, can you tell Lisa and Chris to slow down a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there will be. Lisa right. wants to win this race, and Chris has got nothing to lose. It's her first city yeah. to surf, so they'll be hammering each other well, all the way. Chris looks very determined hanging on. Just a at least Lisa's shoulder. That's going to be a great race. Well, the fastest male ever, Robert Di Costello in 1981, 40 minutes and 8 seconds. The fastest female ever, Lisa Martin, 45 minutes and 47 seconds in 1988. And she is, uh, as we mentioned, uh, one and a half minutes ahead of the, the second fastest female. So she seems to be in a class of her own, but she's getting a bit of a run for her money here today. She is. Um, it looks like Steve won't be, though. He's just pulled away at this point. He's dropped uh, Mel Norwood. Chris, what do you feel about that? Yeah, I think it's... Obviously, it's even before the hill, and Mona, Mona should run away from this field. I mean, he, uh, as you've pointed out, he is in top shape. Mel will, Mel, Mel's going to find it hard to hold back that second group, and I noticed Deke cre creeping into the second group. He'd picked up uh, Rod Higgins and Pat Carroll, so Deke might even come through for second, I think. Let's uh, pick him up then on, on the course at the moment. Uh, off to his left-hand side is uh, Rose Bay, and uh, he's running through this uh, very flat stretch and moving up towards Heartbreak Hill. And that's going to be the real test. Uh, remember, once you get up towards Kambala and King Kotal, that's about the halfway point of the race. That's the seven kilometer mark. And uh, if he gets up the, the, the top of, um, of Heartbreak Hill in good shape, we're hoping that he may have the conditions which could see him come through and break this record, which has stood since 1981. This is the, the amazing gradient ahead for Steve Monaghetti. He's just about through Rose Bay and that climb to 80 metres above sea level. So it's almost high altitude stuff um, for a community uh, runner, not so for Steve Monaghetti, who's preparing for the World Marathon Championship in Tokyo in a few weeks' time. Probably the biggest race of his life. Yeah, Mona loves a hill, and um, obviously the world's in three weeks. Three weeks from today is everything that's on our mind, and this is a, a big hit out for him, and basically Mona wants a big confidence boost out of this race. I noticed Malcolm still tagging in there pretty well and, and Lloydie not far behind now. It's going to be quite a good race for second, third and fourth at this stage if we assume Mona can hold this pace. Well, Lloyd, um, uh, very good on the flat, as we know. He's done uh, his preparation for the, the 5,000 metres. He's done a lot of, lot of sprint work uh, on the track. Uh, mixed in with his endurance work. He does combine both and he does it extremely well. He's a very, well, he's a very fast 1500 metre run on the track, right the way through to the marathon. And in fact, I think even a year, it's only a year to go to the Olympics and he's still not sure what event it is that he wants to specialise in next year. That's a sign of his talent, really, that he, he really doesn't. He's a, a man without an event, he's got them all. So race time coming up to 16 and a half minutes and in the Mobile camera car, Peter G. Well, you can see Steve looking pretty good, 35, 40 metres ahead of Malcolm, and then uh, halfway between Monaghetti and that uh, chasing bunch is Andrew Lloyd, and the chasing bunch being led by Robert Di Costello, who's looking very good, about 100 metres back behind uh, Monaghetti. Norwood there in second place, and Rod De Heiden going with uh, Di Costello. He's been in very good form, of course, down in Victoria. A hat-trick of wins uh, on the road and in cross-country. And there with the likes of Rod Higgins and uh, Pat Carroll chasing out uh, after, well, probably a bit early to say yet, but the minor placings, you would think, because a bit of a hill now. We're at uh, 5K. We're getting towards the, the start of the big climb. And uh, he's starting to try and extend that lead, Steve Monaghetti. So now Monaghetti uh, is uh, working the tangent and he's well and truly into Heartbreak Hill and uh, he's maintaining a very good pace. How's he looking, Chris? Oh, he's looking very good. He's, um, he really is fit and strong at this stage and he'd be, he'd be wanting to get to the top of this hill as relaxed as possible and then really try and run home as hard as possible with a bit of lift. He's looking a lot better than Robert there. Rob's really working this. 
Um, he's in pretty good form this year. Of course, it's always difficult for him with a full-time workload and running to come up to these races and be fresh. But uh, he always puts in a solid performance. And he's dropped off. Is that Pat Carroll? Pat Carroll, yes. He's probably paid a little bit for the early fast pace. So Rob would probably hope to work the hills pretty hard and try and pick up those minor placings. Dead and terrific hill run. Remembering he, he won the Rotterdam Marathon, people have said to him, no, oh, this is just a, a leisurely stroll for you. But he said, no, it's a very painful outing. It's a very hard one. It's, uh, it's fast and it's... As we said earlier, it's the most prestigious road race in Australia for men, and he wants to do well in this event. So Robert Di Costello uh, behind the, the leading place getters at the moment, but uh, he's making up a bit of ground. Uh, he's, he's certainly showing a little bit of distress, which is understandable, but uh, he hasn't had the preparation of, of someone like Monaghetti. That stress could also be a reflection on just how hard he's working the hills, because I'm not sure, but I think we have got Rod Higgins back behind Pat Carroll there, yes. which means Rob's made up quite a considerable amount of ground uh, coming into this hill, and I think he's just working it really hard to see if he can pull himself up closer to those minor placings. Here's Steve Monaghetti. Uh, he's now completed... 19 minutes of race time and uh, we still believe that he's pretty close to this race record schedule he's coming around the curve and uh, he's certainly faster than than last year and i think he's right on the race record here steve monaghetti so he's looking for the uh, tailwind coming down through dover heights it's steve in daylight right now here's deke who's really using the hill to get away from Pat Carroll and I noticed behind Pat Carroll was uh, Rod de Hyden from Victoria who's run three Victorian titles down in Victoria. He's a rising athlete uh, and Lloyd is having a go here at Mal which Mal would get a bit of a surprise at that because uh, Mal would have regarded himself as a bit stronger on the hill but Lloyd is certainly going to be very tough in this race. And he's looking over his shoulder too. He can hear the footsteps I think. Yes he'll probably try and hang on to Lloyd as he goes through but he'll need to because there's a group behind. Robert Di Costello in fourth place at the moment. Well this is the important uh, tactic in running the city to surf. Unless you're in really top form like Steve is and you can run from the front all the way because of the hills on this course, there's a certain amount of pace judgment that's required to get the best performance out of yourself on the day. And Andrew's coming up wide on Mel's just had a quick glance over his shoulder. I think he knows that Andrew's there. And Andrew's uh, staying a little bit wide there. He's probably cutting the tangents, but uh, he's certainly pulling in the distance. Yes, well, I think Mel ran the best, best tangent there because uh, I, I believe you've got to run on the middle of the camber. So, um, the high point of the road because if you're on the low point you tend to be running uphill against athletes. They've done the really hard work up a heartbreak hill now. It, it starts to, to ease off a little bit but Steve Monaghetti going along superbly here. He is on race record schedule and uh, he's running very fluently. He looks very strong indeed. Remember last year he won. He was just seven seconds outside the race record. He then went on to win the, uh, the half marathon at Gateshead in Newcastle, England and then his great victory in Berlin. So he's running in the, in the peak of form at the moment, and he's really in great shape, obviously, for that World Championship. Great go here for the second placing Norwood. Now, psychologically, that has to be a bit of a worry for him. He has yes. been looking over his shoulder. He really did have a big gap on uh, Andrew Lloyd, but Lloyd is looking good. Yes, Lloyd has come through, and he's obviously very fit, Andrew, and, and running well. Mel, Mel really needs to hang on to Andrew here if he's going to have a chance to hold on to the placings. The problem is if he drops off Andrew here, there are others coming through and uh, it, it's a fine line between second and tenth in this race at the moment. It's hard to see anybody catching Mona. I saw Mel just glance over his shoulder again, which isn't a good sign. No. You don't get past and then look behind for the fourth person. Andrew ran a beautiful half marathon on the Gold Coast recently, which means he is in pretty good shape for this distance. And Galen, he'll be looking to spurt again uh, on Norwood here uh, when he gets the opportunity. Uh, I think Andrew would. Of course, Andrew knows he's got the leg speed, so if he can run with someone like Mel up until the last, you know, 400 metres, he's probably going to feel fairly confident about that. But uh, Mel might not be there with 400 metres to go. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I think Lloyd is looking pretty strong. Mel's got to really hang in here hard to have any chance of holding Lloyd, I think. This will be a really good run for Andrew. He lost a lot of his track season because he had to go back and have surgery on his ankle, which he's had every year for the last five or six years since that major car accident he had in the mid-1980s. 
and because of that it's taken him a little bit longer to find form this year his races in Europe probably weren't as good as what he had hoped they would be but over the last month to six weeks he's just started to find that form again and this is Steve Monaghetti now working his way down to Walkloo Shopping Centre and 23 minutes of the race completed but uh, I think no doubt that Andrew Lloyd also is going to run a personal best in the race this year. Peter G. Coming up to the 8K mark, Gordon. 23-26 is the split that uh, Steve is looking at to be uh, right on that record pace of Robert D. Costello's 1981. There's the line across the road, just going across it now. He's right on it. And he's right there. He's a little bit under. He's uh, run the hills exceedingly well. That uh, steep section there up past the convent, the steepest of the race, and... Uh, he hardly altered the expression on his face or his breathing. He's looking so strong up here in exclusive uh, Vaucluse. Uh, the city to surf the last four years, it would appear, exclusive domain of this man. Yes, well, he's entered in six marathons in his life and he's finished in the, the top five in all of those, winning the last one in Berlin. He was fifth in the Olympic marathon in 88 and second to Wakahuri at Auckland. But he equaled John Farrington's record of three in a row last year and he's going to make it four in a row, I'm quite sure, barring accidents which will be a first, and Andrew Lloyd uh, running uh, the race of his life too uh, in this event. Coming up to 24 and a half minutes completed for him. This will be a tremendous confidence boost for Andrew before going over to Tokyo for the World Championships to have a good solid run here. Well, he does a lot of his training, uh, as, as you do, Gaylene, in the Stromlow Forest. There are plenty of hills there, and he does a lot of surging, and it's paid off for him, obviously. It looks that way. Um, I also think we should point out here that these two runners are the only two runners that are representing Australia in the up and coming World Championships. So perhaps we should expect the better performances today to be coming from both Steve and from Andrew. There are no other runners in the World Championships. Rob having withdrawn because he doesn't feel that he's sufficiently recovered from the Rotterdam Marathon to, to race again. So Malcolm Norwood in, in third place at the moment and Rob DiCostello fourth and uh, Pat, Carroll. Pat Carroll in fifth spot at the moment. So he's recovered pretty well. He's picked up uh, on Rob. But yep. it's going to be a great go for the minor placings, particularly that third spot. Well, Pat Carroll's run a very sensibly race. You could tell by the effort that Rob was putting in going up the hills that he was really trying to drop Pat. Pat's let him go and he's obviously reeling him back in on the downhill running. It's a much more efficient way to run. And uh, I think that could be very good for Pat. He could come through um, having conserved that energy. Well, they're running down a little uh, hill now past the Walkloo Cemetery, Walkloo High School, uh, the well-known Eastern Suburbs Finishing Academy across to the left-hand side. And Rodney Costello in, uh, in, in very good shape. There's the wind direction at the moment. So it's, it's more a crosswind, Chris, but there's yes. not much of it. No, well, that's, I think that's all right. So long as it's very light and... Um, I, I don't think that's a worry at all. It can be almost cooling. And De Costello runs into third spot. He yep. now only has uh, Lloyd and Monaghetti in front and Carroll going with him. And he's not going to let Mel hang on, I can tell you. He, he ran past him so quickly and that's good tactics, really. Mel has to hang in here. Pat Carroll is another runner like Andrew Lloyd who has a fantastic ability to run all distances from 1,500 metres right through to the marathon. He has very good times in all of them. So Pat's also probably still trying to get a feel as to which is his best event. Uh, the last year or so he's been concentrating on the 5,000 metres on the track, but he could equally run as well in the 10K or marathon. Well, this is a very uh, confident run by Pat Carroll and uh, Dick trying desperately to stay with him at the moment, but he's looking strong. Yes, Pat's a fine runner. He had a great track season. He had a, a disappointing 5,000 metre tour in Europe, but he's come back all fired up and um, he's potentially one of our, our really top runners. So he's looking good for that third spot. I noticed Dick had a look over his shoulder to see where Norwood was, but this man, Monaghetti, there's no stopping him at the moment. Coming up to 27 minutes, he's now uh, gone into Military Road and uh, he'll wind his way down. Uh, he's going along the coastline. He would have had a glimpse of the ocean there as he came round that curve. So uh, he's gone round the dog leg and he's on the homeward stretch now and uh, the majority of this running is downhill and he must know that he's on record schedule. I'm sure people will be telling him that and uh, let's hope he can do it because there's $50,000 as a carrot at the finish line at Bondi if he can break that 10-year-old record. Well, Gordon, I think uh, his bank manager's rubbing his hands together. The crowd certainly are, I think, triple the numbers that we saw along here last year. So they've heard that uh, Monaghetti might be able to... Uh, make history four wins in a row and uh, take this race record as well and 
back the and battle there for the minor placings. Well, what a, what a champion, uh, Robert De Costello. Carol looked to have his measure, but Deke uh, was foxing, Gaylene. This is a rerun from last year, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Um, on to that course record. When Rob ran the City to Surf and ran 40.08 in 1981, he ran it off 215 kilometres that, that week, which is a phenomenal amount of training. Uh, ten years later, it's no longer a fun run anymore. It's a really prestigious road race, and these runners are, are coming into it tapered and fairly fresh. I, I do expect Steve to break that record today. I think he's in the best form of his life, and um, going into the World Championships, I'm sure he's ready to do it. Well, we're coming up to the next uh, target point. We'll be going down to Peter G shortly. I, I checked with Monaghetti and he had uh, some tea and a few pieces of toast and Vegemite this morning, so a pretty light preparation for him. And uh, Andrew Lloyd in second place at the moment, running very nicely too. So coming up to the 29-minute mark, and uh, we'll see how we are going regarding that target. But we feel here that this race record is definitely on for Steve Monaghetti. Peter G. Coming up to the 10K mark, 28.56 is the split. At 9K is about 15 seconds underneath it. We'll see on the mark under the road. He might have just dropped off a touch, but he's right on it. In fact, just a second or two outside as he crosses the line now. Two seconds outside that target time. It's uh, it looked a little bit more difficult for him up some of those inclines heading up towards the park here. No breeze to speak of. Might be getting a little bit warm, too. Well, uh, Chris Wardlaw made the prediction. If, if the record does go, it's only going to be a matter of seconds. And yeah. this is really the last um, hill for him. It's a, a slight incline, and then it's pretty well all downhill. So people along the course, if you're watching at the moment, get out on the road and tell Monaghetti he can break this record. Give him the support. He looks beautiful. His rhythm is so smooth. He looks light on his feet. His shoulders are relaxed. There's no tension up there in his neck and shoulders. To me, he looks comfortable. Well, he's just run uh, Dudley Page Reserve off to his right at the moment. And uh, there the shot back to Sydney Harbour and all its glory. But uh, that's Military Road uh, on the bottom. It's a, a straight road, quite a straight stretch here. And then we'll wind our way down towards Bondi Beach and the finish. The it's hard a, a lovely done. part of Sydney here. Yeah, the hard work's done for Mona now. He's just got to really run on home as strongly as possible. There's a lot of incentive there for him and, and he will roll home. I, I don't underrate the record, though. I think Deke ran it when he was um, really about his, to blitz yep, the world. Yep, and, um, that's true. And, you know, if Monarch had, can run right on that time or a couple of seconds under, I think it shows that he's, he's really up there at, at that sort of class because Deke ran, went on to break the world record at that Later time. that year, yeah. that's correct. He went from the city to surf, two weeks later won Fisherman's Bend, and then he went off to Europe and the United States. He won four of his five races over there. And a few months later, backed it up with his world record, the 208.18 in Fukuoka, Japan. That's right. Well, I guess um, a lot of the uh, runners below the elite level will be making their way now up Heartbreak Hill as we've gone past uh, nearly 31 minutes. And uh, our man on the spot, uh, breathless no doubt, Mark Tonelli. Well, young lady, and I mean, all these guys, how does it feel to be after to be running with the boys? All right, as long as you get there. <laughs> Do you think you can beat them? I know, not all of them. Well, you're certainly ahead of a lot of them right now. What's your, what's your, what are you thinking at the moment? Almost at the top of Heartbreak Hill. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Thelma Davies from Girraween is a regular in the race. She is, has to be the fastest for her age ever. That wasn't her. But uh, last year, the 67-year-old ran 75 minutes, Gaylene. Phenomenal performance, isn't it? That's wonderful. But... Um, that uh, um, lady speaking to Mark Tonelli also running a very good race, very good time. I think it must be really difficult having to run with so many people around you at Heartbreak Hill. Mm. And imagine just the heat that's generated that's right. from the body heat mm. in a crowd of that size. And Chris, Steve Monaghetti uh, apparently have brought a few of his mates up from Melbourne. Mark Seymour, who's the lead singer with the popular rock group, Hunters and Collectors, and uh, he's hoping to finish in the top 50. Yes, he would have, but I don't think he came in the end. Oh, didn't he? Oh. <laughs> but he's got a couple of other mates up here from Ballarat. They've got a good contingent. I noticed the group behind Mona there. Um, it's quite a tight race for second. They were, I think they were uh, closing on Lloydie. You think they're, they're pulling Andrew in? Well, that's possible because Andrew has been training for the 5,000 metres, so uh, 14K is a bit longer. Pat Carroll looking good. 
Rob's back in front again. Boy, this is one way that these guys don't want to have to run. I'm sure they'd rather be Steve up in front all by themselves instead of going backwards and forwards. Um, if it comes to a sprint between these two, Rob's definitely going to be finishing behind Pat. So. There's Lloyd. It's still quite a very solid gap to Lloyd. So Andrew Lloyd uh, holding down second place at the Probably moment. And I think seconds. this really gives you an idea of just how fast they're running too, yes. Chris. That's right. They fly along. Um, they're running at 440, 435 mile pace, and um, that's really flying. Well, I wonder how the uh, the women's race is going. Let's uh, bring us up to date. Jogger Cam, Dick Telford. How are you going, fellas? And Gailies. I'm just behind uh, uh, Lisa Martin now on Deaky. She's about 30 metres up on, or 50 metres up on Krishna Wood in second place. And behind Krishna, Jackie Hallam was coming through fairly well. And uh, the young Japanese runner was behind there. So I must hasten to add, I've taken a bit of a shortcut. I'm not this fit to keep up with Lisa all the way. <laughs> what kind of time is Lisa running, Dick? Beg your pardon, Gary? What kind of time is Lisa on? Um, well, it's 10K now, and it's 33.51. Oh, that's pretty good solid running, particularly as they've uh, over, gone over the hills. That's damn good running because Lisa hasn't had a, a long run for about nine weeks. So she's just proving that she's a, a champion. Gutsing it right through, I think, eh? Was it on the hills that Lisa dropped Krishna? Well, it must have been because she dropped me as well. And I couldn't see, eh? <laughs> well, that's Lisa, uh, Lisa in, the, in the green shorts. Yes. And uh, she looks very comfortable indeed. And uh, as we said, she's going to beat um, well, most of the, the males home in this race. A lot of the males. <laughs> the vast majority of the males. Yes. <laughs> Coming up to another target time. And uh, Steve Monaghetti, still on race record schedule. Peter G. He is one second under, Gordon. A little bit of uh, steeper downhill stuff there. And he really ran it hard. The uh, previous kilometre, about three minutes. But he's back uh, about... 2.45 that last day, so, uh, well, it's going to be touch and go. It's going to be uh, like last year, I think. Well, great excitement, uh, Peter. As you say, it's it's going to be a nerve-tingling finish, but uh, Monos knows that uh, he's in with a great chance here, and he's really stretching out Chris going down this hill towards Bondi. Yeah, Monos a good hill runner, but he's also a very fine downhill runner. A lot of athletes... Uh are a bit more scared of him on some of the downhill. He just flows along and uh, he's got no sort of uh, constraints at all in his running style. So he does like the downhill. Well, Australian sport is really on a high at the moment. Um, the netballers uh, won the world championship. The rugby league team have demolished New Zealand. The Wallabies yesterday beat the All Blacks and there's been a great participation from the public. The singing at the football stadium was magnificent. And listen to the crowd support here as uh, Steve Monaghetti comes down and hoping to break this record. Fantastic support here from the, the public in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Oh, Steve's a wonderful athlete. He's a very popular athlete, an easy person to talk to, communicates well with people, and it's not surprising that he's getting so much public support for, for this event today. Yes, uh, great ovation as he comes down, uh, pretty well up to the, the 12 kilometre mark now, so just a couple of kilometres to go. He's just under the race record schedule. Robert De Casella set that record, 1981, 40 minutes and eight seconds. And uh, there's every chance it's going to go after all this time. It's been a magnificent run by Steve Monaghetti. He has to come down onto Campbell Parade there. And uh, we think he's just about down to the, uh, the clubhouse now. Yes, sir. Mm. Um, there was a photographer out on the road there, happy. Gordon, that he uh, had the bat out of his way. Yeah. Well, you've, you need to cut the tangents. You've got to run the shortest possible line in this event, and you can't be forced out running wide, otherwise you're running extra meterage. And we're talking about trying to break a record by a few seconds here, and you can't afford to have people in your way on the course. And he's, just gone past the, he's just gone past the uh, North Bondi Surf Life Saving Club, so he's into Campbell Parade now. And this, uh, Chris, is a never-ending stretch. You think yeah. it uh, just goes on and on? It's a lot longer than you imagine. <laughs> But he's, uh, he's on 37 minutes, so he's got three minutes to get home from here, and uh, he'll, be, he'll be pushing very hard. Well, there's the, the hairpin as they come along Campbell Parade. He'll go round there, and uh, then he has, uh, what, less than a minute to the finishing line. So um, he's really giving it everything he's got here, Gailene. 
He still looks relaxed and comfortable to me. I've been really impressed with his focus today. He looks so focused. Yeah. Uh, it's one of his strengths. He's, yeah. This is really a key, a keyed up effort for Tokyo, which is his huge focus. It's the biggest event of his life. And um, he'll be, now I think he'd be almost even thinking of Tokyo. Uh, it'll be on his head, on his mind. You spent time with him uh, in the hotel room this morning, Chris. Uh, what were you, your words to him? Oh, we were just talking about making sure he was aggressive early and get people off the bit and just run strong and feel powerful. We didn't talk about the record at all. Um, and he was about to go out for his three-mile job. This is an exciting change. Pat Carroll has caught and passed Andrew Lloyd. Pat Carroll's run himself into second place. This is a wonderful performance by Pat. A great run. So Steve Monaghetti, uh, again, being lifted here by the crowd as he runs along Campbell Parade. He's coming up to the hairpin. And not far to go now. And uh, I think he's just under the race record schedule. It's going to be nip and tuck. But this great runner, Steve Monaghetti, arguably the greatest marathon runner in the world at the moment, we'll find out in three weeks' time, but he is in tremendous shape. His preparation has been spot on, and uh, he's given no one else a chance here. We've been really lucky in Australia with our depth of marathon runners, with Robert, Steve, with Lisa, Derek Payne. We've had a fantastic tradition of running. And here's Pat Carroll looking really strong into second place. He'll be delighted with this run today. He didn't run well in Europe. He was expected to go to the World Championships this month, but poor performances in Europe. He was uh, not, not competing in the 5,000 metres now, so it's good to see him come back and running well. But it's Monas all the way being brought in by this entourage of cyclists. So Monaghetti uh, is round the bend, and I still think he's going to break this record. He's really got to surge it out now over the closing stages. It's a fair run in from memory. <laughs> well, Monaghetti running very strongly. There's the race record on the left. And he's got to finish this uh, last few hundred metres. The crowd is urging him on. I think he's a few seconds underneath it. We'll soon find out, though. This mm, has been a spectacular run. <laughs> He's not able to really give it that full sprint in the closing stages. But it's going to be very close indeed. He's Can he break this record? He's sprinting he now, now. Chris. He must be close. He's seen that finishing clock and he's sprinting now. I think he's going to get this record. Oh, he's got yes, it. He's, he's got, got it. it. What a performance. Well, he's not almost officially. broken 40 <laughs> minutes. You're he's right. beaten the record by five <laughs> seconds, Steve Monaghetti, and he collects a bonus of $50,000. What a run. Actually, we were warned that uh, official time may not be the clock time, so we better be careful on that. A good run here into second place by Pat Carroll, with Andrew Lloyd not far behind, and a very strong run by Rob for fourth yeah. place today. Great run. So, and, and Duke's going to run a, a really solid time, so... Um, well, a personal best here for Pat Carroll. That's a very uh, good It has time. to be a personal best. It's his first yes. city to surf. Yes. yes, great run by Pat Carroll. Because you run under 41 minutes in your, first, in your first city to surf is a tremendous run. And Andrew Lloyd running very strongly also. I think his fastest time was 41.24, so you can see uh, he's uh, over 30 seconds inside that. A great run, Andrew Lloyd, into yep. third place. And Perfect. Deke is going to come into fourth place. Uh, a very courageous performance from him. Faster than last year, and he'll be very happy with that. That's a really solid run from Robin. Looks good for next year. Well done, Pat. Well, what excitement. Uh, and I, I'm sure running. that the people lining the route uh, who knew the record was on just lifted him uh, that, those few extra seconds yeah. that were necessary. Well, I thought it would only be a matter of seconds, and that's how it's turned out. Uh. Rod Higgins in coming into fifth place here, another AIS runner, trains under Pat Clohesse, won the Australian 15K Road Champs. Paul oh, Arthur. wait a minute, Paul Arthur. Paul yeah. Arthur may have been fifth and Rod sixth. Yeah. So Paul Arthur from New South Wales, the second New South Wales runner through, he'll be very pleased with that performance. It's a good run by Paul. There's a lot of depth in this race. In fact, down to down through the 20s and 30s will be a very strong race. Well, after the uh, the exuberance and the, the joy of seeing Steve Monaghetti break the long-standing race record, I wonder how Lisa Ondiki is going. Uh, we feel she's just outside the, the record at the moment. Um, remember, she missed training for four weeks, but Dick Telford, bring us up to date. Yeah, well, Lisa ran away from me down the hill very strongly, but in second place, Krishna Wood, came past like a steam train as well. She was running exceptionally well. And uh, they're the only two girls that have passed me at the moment. But what a fantastic run of monitors. And 
And well done to the other guys, Pat Carroll and Lloyd. That was great too. And uh, Deke in fourth spot. Yes, oh, it's well, been... the old Deke. It's been... you, he's always going to be a great runner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think he enjoyed he enjoyed the race, but um, certainly Pat Carroll was the big surprise in his first city to surf. Um, a magnificent performance. Yeah, well, Pat, a little bit unfortunate overseas. He got cooked before he went across there, but he's a great runner too. He's got a big future still. And our distance runners are, are really setting things alight, aren't they, Gailene? We've got a lot of talent in Australia in both men's and women's in distance running. It's really exciting, Gordon. Well, a new race record to Steve Monaghetti, and he's with Steve Rebilliard. And we've just had confirmation that the official time is 40.02.46. So he's certainly done it. And Steve, uh, congratulations. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, it's nice to sneak under at last. And uh, 50 grand will come in handy? Oh, well, it's a great hit out, really. It's, um, it's nice to get such an acclaimed record, and it's terrific to, uh, to be so close. I would have liked to have ducked under 40 minutes, actually, but you've always got to set yourself high goals. So it's, uh, it's a good effort. Standing here at the finish the last few minutes, I thought, gee, it's quite warm. How was it for you? Yeah, not too bad out there, really. We, I don't know if I've ever liked having a wind off the, off the top, up the cliffs once we got up there, but I was pretty happy to have a, a bit of a light breeze just cooling the sweat. So it was pretty good conditions, really. It was, it's a bit warm now. I've stopped, but certainly out there running was virtually ideal for running. And the story of losing the other competitors, you really shed them quite quickly. Yeah, I like to get uh, get rid of the others just in case they get a sniff of victory. And obviously, I'm not a fast finisher, so the earlier I can get uh, get rid of those quick guys, the better. But there's been some sensational runs from Pat Carroll and Lloydie and and uh, all the runners back through the field. It was a great depth this year, and I think um, so many runners under 41 minutes is a great testament to the depth and the quality of field that we've had here today. And I think Lisa's going to go very close in the women's as well, which is great. Let's see how she's going. Lisa on Diki. Pretty well by the look of things, and uh, she's running with a group of male runners. And uh, Lisa, who received that tremendous boost with her husband, Jovis, uh, just missing the world 5,000 metres record. He thrashed the second place getter by 18 seconds. She had a look at her, her clock, and uh, coming up to 45 minutes, and remember that um, she's run the fastest time. She's she had a looking good look behind. Over. She asked the gentleman next to her to look behind. She wants to make sure she wins this race today. Mm -hmm. She's not in the kind of form that she uh, was in in 1988 when she set this course record, but she's a fantastic athlete. Uh, she's been training really hard. It's disappointing that she injured herself and has had to withdraw from the World Marathon Championships. But being the competitor that she is, she doesn't want a second place here today. She wants to win. It's all or nothing for Lisa. Well, her record of 45-43 is very safe. She's not going to break that. And she's coming up to the hairpin. And uh, the main thing is that she has her nearest rival covered. And I think she does, although Krishna was running very strongly, according to Dick Telford. Well, Krishna's a, a, a track runner. She's a fast 3,000 metre runner. She could uh, be a better runner than Lisa over the 3,000 metres. And I think in a year or two, even up to the 10K. Krishna's been out for three or four years with injuries and she's just coming back now. She had a fairly good season in Europe this year, but she doesn't have the strength that Lisa has over the, long, just over the longer races like the 14K today. And it probably wasn't surprising that it was the hills that Lisa was able to pull away to Krishna on. But if Lisa finishes within a minute, Minute, minute and a half of what she ran in 1988. I'm sure she'll be delighted with that. I think she's going to finish about uh, just under a minute inside her race record time. So that's a, as you say, Gailene, a tremendous performance. And uh, she's looking over her shoulder uh, very anxiously to see where Krishna is. Yeah, well, Krishna's got a strong finish. I guess so. She'd be just making sure that Krishna's not sneaking up on her. But Lisa is, well, she's one of the world's outstanding athletes. And uh, it's disappointing we're not going to see her in Tokyo, but she just wasn't in the sort of shape she needed to be in. And uh, hopefully uh, a major marathon before Barcelona, and we'll see her in Barcelona challenging for the goal. So she's less than a, a minute to... Outside her record of last year, which she'll was, be delighted uh, with 45, that. 43. She'll be really pleased with that. That's a really solid run given the four weeks of training that she lost last month. And this is her first race back. She'll be really pleased with that. 59 seconds uh, outside her race record of 1988. It really was a mighty effort by Lisa Ondiki with uh, that limited preparation and the setback when she spilt that milk in the kitchen. And Krishna Stanton, uh, formerly Wood, when she comes in, is going to have one of the fastest times run on the course too. There she is. Krishna's finished. She's probably, I don't know what her official time is yet, but it'll be one of the fastest city to surf times ever run, and that's her first up race today. Great Terrific run, Krishna. Run. Krishna was uh, an outstanding talent and is running to some injury problems, but 
that, that's a great sign. Yes, well, I think uh, her Krishna's time round about uh, Tani Ruckel's uh, best time, but we can check on that. Let's go to Steve Rebillion. Thanks very much, Gordon. Well, uh, Rob Degastel and Pat Carroll, you guys had a great dice out there, Dick. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it's, it's always good to have a, a good competitive run against someone, and Pat and I have been training together for a long time down in Canberra, so uh, whilst we're, we're good friends and good training partners, uh, I don't think there's anybody you prefer to beat than your training partner. <laughs> Pat? No, I, I must agree with that. I, I really enjoy training with Rob, but uh, when you get into a race, it's uh, every man for himself, so I just went for it. And when did you get the break on him? Uh, I think it was probably around about uh, 12K. Uh, I can't really uh, remember everything in the race. is a bit of a blur, but it was around about 12K, and I uh, fell OK going up a little incline, so I kept on going. And you hauled in Andy as well? That's right, yeah. For about a kilometre to go, I, uh, I didn't want to be near Andrew with, a, with a, uh, about 200 <laughs> to go because we both got a reasonable good kick, and uh, I didn't want to put all my cookies in one barrel, so I uh, took off about 1K to go. Rob, uh, you wouldn't be surprised that Steve broke the record? No, I think Steve's running exceptionally well, and uh, it's a, a perfect day today. Uh, it, was a, it was a good, solid pace. It wasn't ridiculously fast early on, and I think that's, a, that's the best way to, to uh, have a go at the record. And, of course, Steve is in sensational shape going into the World Championships, and I think it's, uh, it's very exciting for all of us now to be able to sit back and see what he does up in Tokyo in three weeks' time. And finally, the, the heat, not, uh, not a bother for you today? No, I don't think it was too hot. It was, um, it was just, I think, perfect conditions. Um, you know, you can always have it a little bit cooler, but I don't think uh, it, was a, it was a problem at all. Thanks very much, Rob and uh, Pat. We're going to go to uh, Mark Tonelli on the hill. No, 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 no. Thanks for that. Well, over a 14-kilometre race, you have 28 kilometres on either side of, uh, of houses. Twenty-eight kilometres on either side of houses, as I was saying, and but garden parties like this spring up all the time. So Eddie and Chris are our hosts here at the moment. Why aren't you running, Eddie? Oh, look. Uh, usually on Sundays I usually play tennis uh, with. Uh, I coach uh, three other guys down in uh, Bellevue Hill. Uh huh. Uh, that, uh, no, don't, look, look. Why aren't you? You live on Heartbreak Hill. Why aren't you running it? Oh well. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather play tennis. <laughs> Chris, Christine, have you ever run the uh, City uh, to Serve? No, not, not lately, but in the past I did have a go, but it's uh, really, by the time you get to the top of the hill, it really kills you. It's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. OK, guys, you've all heard that uh, the Monas broke the record. How about we all toast the Monas? <laughs> the Monaghetti. Hey, Pip. Hey, Pip. Hey, Pip. And with a bit of champagne around, I think uh, Mark Tanilli will and truly ensconced for the remainder of the day. But uh, this is a community, the community event, as we, if we mentioned, and uh, I think some of the, the people who are involved uh, need special mention. And that has to be one of the youngest ever competitors. What a sight <laughs> and what a speed. <laughs> I can remember Rob pushing Krista in a, in a jogger in an 8K race and uh, he ended up being, she ended up being second woman behind Rosa Mota, <laughs> Victor Ain Mola, but 8K, it was embarrassing. <laughs> well, that little baby will uh, reflect on this performance uh, and uh, look back with a lot of joy, I think, to have completed the course uh, so quickly in, in under one hour. But uh, we have... Uh, Lisa Ondiki standing by now with Steve Rebillion. Thanks, Gordon. And Lisa, you, uh, you enjoyed the run, but the injuries didn't bother you? The injury didn't bother me at all. So I've only been training for three weeks and only part of that three weeks. I was really happy to win. You, uh, did you at any stage give yourself a chance at, uh, at the record? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I wasn't even sure if I'd run here because there were girls in this race who've been training for months and months and I've only had three weeks and I didn't want to line up and get beaten. I was really afraid yeah. and I lost a hundred bucks. I bet Rob DiCostello that I'd finish within five minutes of him and I didn't. Did <laughs> I really? lost money today. Someone won 50000 I lost a hundred dollars. <laughs> I heard you say you have to sell the house to, to pay the bet. Yeah, I asked him if he'd let me out of it but he said no. <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Lisa, and uh, a good run today. It's, it's Gordon Bray. Thanks, Steve. Yes, well, uh, Zafarin, who is the nanny for uh, baby Jessica, uh, will be watching... Baby uh, Emma. Lisa, baby Emma, I should say. I'm getting confused with there are so many babies at the moment. <laughs> I think Nick Clark Jones, the Australian captain, has just had oh, a baby Jessica. Pat Carroll's little girl's Jessica as well. <laughs> well, I'm covered that way, aren't I? But, <laughs> but there are runners from HMAS Perth competing. Ten runners led by Lieutenant Commander Gilbert. And HMAS Perth arrived home last Sunday from a tour of duty in the Mediterranean. Just some of the, the interesting entries in this year's race. I think we can go back now to Mark Tonelli. 
Yeah. Thanks. Well, they're starting to slow down here at long last. And here's a gentleman here. You're looking pretty sprightly, as a matter of fact. Oh, I'm not feeling too bad, mate. The old what did, what did you just start halfway through the race, did you? Yeah, yeah. Good luck. See you later. One interview, man, mate. <laughs> Thanks. Blue and ah. Yes, well, uh, the oldest competitor this, this year, uh, two of them, 87-year-old Bill Wood from Panania and Ernie Ashcroft from Tookley. Ernie's having his 11th run. He lives in the Heritage Mobile Homes Estate on the Central Coast. And uh, another female runner, Agnes Turner, 81 years of age. She's run a fastest time uh, last year of 117 minutes. And Agnes Turner is the mother of Leslie Turner, our famous tennis player who won the French and Italian singles titles and a Wimbledon doubles title. So their age is no barrier, Gaylene, in this race. I think that's wonderful. I'd hope to be running that well when I'm that old. I doubt it, though. I don't think the body will stay together long enough. Also, uh, Jim Webster, one of Australia's best-known sports writers, competing in his 18th race. And he's only missed those other three because of overseas duty with the Sydney Morning Herald. But we now have the, the second runner in this race, Krishna, and she's with Steve. Krishna, you're just telling me about the, the history of your injury. That's a, a staggering one to come back from. <laughs> yes, it um, took a lot of persistence to um, keep going and want to get back. Yeah, so uh, it was a foot injury that kept you out for how long? Um, from 87 to 1990 was my first year back. And tell us about the story of the race today. Uh, with Lisa for much of it? Well, my, um, I really didn't know what to expect. I've never run the course before. I didn't know the course. Um, I just knew everyone talked about this heartbreak hill. So I thought, well, if I um, can stick with Lisa as long as I can, um, I really had no expectations of like keeping up with it for the whole race, but I thought if I can stick with it for as long as I can and then carry through to the end, well, I should be pleased. You did an outstanding job. Well done. Thank you. Yes, well, what a race it's been. Uh, a new race record to Steve Bodaghetti. Lisa Ondiki winning the Women's Prize, a fitting 21st birthday celebration to really cap two decades of achievement for Australian running. On the 5th of September 1971, 1,650 runners officially started the first city to surf. Among them, US Olympian Kenny Moore and Australian champion distance runner John Farrington. The duel between them was eagerly awaited. Moore eventually winning the clash just 16 seconds ahead of the Australian in a time of 44.28. For the next three years, though, it was all Farrington. He is still the only person to have won three consecutive races. But for the marathon runner, once around the course was never enough. I understand that after you arrived back at the finish, you, went, you ran all the way back to the city to pick up your clothes. Well, it's, that's by design. The, the reason I do it is that... Uh, my, I've got a marathon race coming up, the Australian Marathon, which is 26 miles, and nine miles isn't much of a training run for that. 1975 saw the race's starting line move to its present location in College Street. By 76, the number of entrants had swelled to 10,000. Victorian Tim O'Shaughnessy shaved over a minute off the previous best with his winning run of 42.04, 12 seconds in front of the up-and-coming Robert D. Costello. Deke went one step further the following year, flashing a massive 53 seconds off O'Shaughnessy's time to post a record win. In 1978, the number of entries broke the 20,000 mark. It was a chaotic start. De Costello lost a shoe in the melee, but still managed fourth place. The top three positions all went to Victorians, headed by Chris Wardlaw, now the coach of Monaghetti. 1981 and the records tumbled. 21,000 starters towed the line, Record crowds lined the streets, and for the winner, Robert D. Costello, a record time of 40 minutes, 8 seconds, which has yet to be beaten. New Zealander Alison Rowe also posted a record time in the women's section. Back-to-back -back titles went to local star Andrew Lloyd in 83 and 84. After years of minor placings, marriage seemed to do the trick. Lloyd won his 83 title just five days after returning from a month-long honeymoon in America. Englishman Hugh Jones became the only foreign runner since Kenny Moore to win the City to Surf in 1985. American Nancy Dietz completed the overseas double. And Dietz did it again in 86, with Andrew Lloyd picking up his third City to Surf. 87 produced the best finish. Courageous Brad Camp outlasted American Mark Kirk by just one second. Over 37,000 people started in the bicentenary, the largest field ever. 
Lisa Martin set a new women's record of 45-47, nearly two minutes off the previous best. For Steve Monaghetti, it marked the first of consecutive City to Surf victories. While after two seconds, 1989 finally spelt a win in the women's section for Australia's Tani Ruckle. And last year, Monas made it three in a row to equal the records of Farrington and Lloyd. His time, just seven seconds outside Rob Di Costello's nine-year-old record. Yes, and it's now history that Monas has even gone better. He's broken that race record that has stood for so long. Steve Monaghetti first in a new race record time of 40 minutes and two seconds. Pat Carroll second, a great run from him. Andrew Lloyd with a personal best in third place. And looking at the women's result, Lisa Ondiki first, Krishna Stanton second, and Tanigawa from Japan in third place. And Monas, of course, is $50,000 richer, courtesy of race sponsor Colonial Mutual, and uh, he'll be delighted with that result. Just to wrap up, Chris, on what has been a fantastic race. Yeah, terrific race, uh, terrific depth in the men's field. Monas obviously put his stamp on this race and follows some great people. Uh, to take Deke's record is is something that, you know, both of us feel is a wonderful achievement because Deke is really one of the greatest runners ever. And uh, the runs behind by, by Carol and Lloydie were terrific as well. And Gaylene, a pleasure to have you aboard once again. Uh, you really enjoyed it. <coughs> oh, I was delighted, particularly with the women's performances. For Lisa to be that close to her record with all the problems that she's had is wonderful. OK, that winds up our coverage. Thanks for joining us. Gordon Bray signing off on behalf of Gaylene Clues and also Chris Wardlaw and our entire production team Join us again soon.